I've been playing video games for years, so much so that one may even refer to me as a gamer. And when I first switched over to Linux, I was sort of worried about how well gaming on Linux actually would function because I've heard a lot of conflicting reports, some people saying it was an absolute train wreck and you shouldn't even bother, just run Windows instead, and some people saying it's so good that it's even better than it is on Windows in some cases. And it wasn't until I actually tried some stuff out recently that I found out it's actually pretty good, isn't it? At least if you're willing to do a little bit of research, and in the cases where stuff doesn't work 100% perfectly, like maybe it has a bit of screen tearing or something like that, that there might be some extra work you need to do. And from December to mid-January, you get a lot of articles that were basically titled like this. The best Linux distros for gaming in 2021. Gaming on Linux. What distro should I use? Top 10 best gaming distros in 2021. Things like that. Now, I had assumed that this article from Gaming on Linux was basically going to be the same thing that I'd seen from like The Verge and Anand Tech and all those other tech websites. But no, this is actually a really good article. Basically, it just makes fun of all those other articles. The TLDR is pretty much, if you're completely new to Linux, you've never run a Linux distro before, just run Ubuntu or PopOS, which is just generally good advice anyway. They're very good distros to start with because they come with nice defaults that make it very easy to use. And if you want something that's similar to what SteamOS was supposed to be, there's a distro out there called GamerOS, which has a pretty terrible name. But basically, it's, it's what SteamOS is supposed to be, except that it's actually being updated. But I'm going to take it a step further. I'm not just going to say that Ubuntu and PopOS and maybe Manjaro as well are really good distros to be running. I'm going to say that the best Linux distro to run for gaming is whatever distro you currently have right now. Right now, I'm running Arch Linux. And I have had literally no problems playing anything on this because distros do not matter at all when it comes to gaming on Linux. With a couple of very loose exceptions. Firstly, make sure you're running a distro that's running at least a semi-modern kernel. It doesn't have to be the absolute latest thing, but if you're running something from like 10 years ago, okay, maybe there'll be some slight issues there playing modern AAA games, but anything that's actually being maintained, you'll be fine with. Secondly, make sure that either they're in your standard repos or you have some other way to install the GPU drivers, whatever GPU you have. Now, I know that NVIDIA drivers are a little bit fiddly, and that might be a good reason to go and use something like PopOS or Manjaro. You can get them working on other distros, but I've never had any luck actually doing that. If you're running an AMD GPU, though, AMD seems to just be the better choice on Linux anyway. And the third and most obvious thing is make sure that you can actually get Steam installed on your distro. So, when it comes to Steam, it was only ever officially packaged for Ubuntu. So if you have any problems with actually getting it installed, don't go to Valve for support because they don't care. You're doing it through a third-party method. There are guides on like the Arch Linux wiki on how to get it installed on Arch, and I presume Gen2 and Void and other distros like that probably have their own guides. In the case of Arch, at least, you do have to go and enable some extra repos and install some 32-bit libraries, but it's not really that difficult. Or if you're doing stuff outside of Steam or just want a general way to manage all of your games, most people seem to recommend using Lutris over Wine directly. So Lutris is basically a free and open source game launcher, which also wraps Wine. So anything that isn't running through Steam, we have access to Proton. You can then run through Wine and hopefully get it running on Linux. Now, I'm going to say something that might be kind of unpopular, and that is that I genuinely don't care about Linux native games existing. In fact, I don't just not care, I am happier when they don't exist because it means that less developer resources are wasted making a Linux version. Even if they do exist, I'm not going to run it. I'm just going to target Windows by running the game through Proton or Wine and it's probably going to run way better than the Linux native version ever would. I understand sort of why people would say no Linux, no bucks. Basically, if they don't release a Linux native version, then they just won't buy the game. That made sense before Proton and Wine were as good as they are, but now that they're in the state that they're in, I don't really think that argument holds any water anymore. These Linux ports being a train wreck kind of reminds me of the early days of the PS3 and Xbox 360, so I don't know if you're paying attention at the time, but basically what happened is that most devs were focusing on the consoles. A lot of games just never even made their way to PC at the time. And when they did start getting the PC, what you noticed is you got really buggy ports, they'd be really laggy, 
and there was seemingly no reason for it because the PCs obviously were going to be more powerful. The reason why it happened is because these devs had no experience working on a PC and had no idea what they were actually supposed to do to actually get the game to work well on it. And the exact same problem happens here as well. If you've only ever developed games for consoles and for Windows, you're not really going to know what you need to do to actually make it work well on Linux. And I can imagine that some devs probably think it's enough to just go into Unreal or Unity, click export to a Linux target, and then it'll just magically work. But there's a lot more work that needs to be done besides that. And when you have a Linux native version, it doesn't just stop at release because then you actually have to then go and maintain it. And if these developers have no experience actually working on Linux, I don't know how well they would go actually addressing Linux specific problems. Now, problems that are with the game itself, that's probably going to be fine. But if there's anything that for whatever reason, maybe some random packages installed actually introduce, I don't know how they would actually go about addressing that when they don't really have any idea how to actually do so. And if you don't know why devs don't focus on Linux and why they just give us these half-baked ports, it's pretty much just because there are basically no Steam users who actually run Linux. So if we just go over to the Steam hardware survey and we go over to the OS version, as we can see, most people are on Windows 10, that actually makes a lot of sense. I'm surprised Windows 10 has actually been growing that much. But if we go all the way down to Linux, 0.78%. Now, some of those people are going to be giving fake information to the Steam hardware survey, but let's just say that at absolute most, it's 1.5%. I can't imagine it's more than OSX, but let's just say 1.5%. Why would devs focus on the 1.5% when they can go and focus on this 96.4%? It just makes more sense to go and focus on Windows instead. Even though it definitely would be cool to see developers actually properly focusing on Linux, it just doesn't make commercial sense when your user base is going to be this small, especially when you can't guarantee that every single Steam Linux user is actually going to buy your game. So you have to rely on a very small subset of an already very small subset, and that just doesn't make any commercial sense. Especially right now, I think that it just makes more sense to focus on improving the translation layers and just making them as good as possible. So Wine and Proton, Proton being a fork of Wine, so basically just Wine, what they do is translate the Windows API calls into calls that make sense on Linux. And we're at the point now where these layers have gotten so efficient and so light that we're getting basically native performance on Linux. And in some very, very small cases, I know that the newest Tomb Raider game was like this, you actually got, in some cases, better than native performance. And the reason why it was like that is because Linux is just generally lighter than running Windows, so you have less of a Windows overhead there, which is a nice advantage to get as well. If you want to play every single game as it comes out on day one, being on Windows just makes more sense. But if you're happy to wait, and in some cases happy to skip out on games, Playing on Linux is just fine. I think the worst thing that I've had so far is trying to play Borderlands, the pre-sequel. So for the past six years, for whatever reason, the installation for it is a little bit broken. So it has the launcher file and another executable file with their names backwards. And the way you fix it is just switching the names and it works just fine. I have no idea how it manages to work on Windows being broken like that, but... That's all I really had to do. And there are some games that I have seen which recommend having some extra options for Proton just to make it run a little bit smoother. I didn't bother including the options and they seem to just run completely fine. Now, when I say you might have to skip out on some games, that makes it sound far worse than it actually is because I've got a Steam library from back when I was on Windows and obviously I put no thought into whether it actually runs on Linux when I bought these games. And as we can see, 52 of my games, which is most of my games, have a platinum rating on Proton DB, and then another 18 have gold, seven have silver, only six have bronze. I don't have anything that's balked. I do have a couple of things that just don't have ratings, but most of the games that I have actually work perfectly fine. Now, I do think there is a place for advocating developers to change their actions, and that is in the way they do DRM and anti-cheat. And this is a good part of the reason why there are balked games on Proton DB, because when the game has this like kernel level DRM, it's very difficult to actually get that working inside of Wine or through Proton. 
And when a game basically comes with that, you're pretty much stuck. Or if you have client-side anti-cheat that is really, really restrictive, basically it will kill Wine. Or in some cases, it's bad enough where it will detect Wine as cheating software and then get your account banned. I've seen that reported a few times on Reddit. I don't have any concrete evidence of that actually happening, but I could definitely believe it being the case. But less restrictive DRM and anti-cheat isn't just going to benefit the Linux guys. This also benefits people on Windows and Mac OS as well, because even on those systems, a lot of the time this software just doesn't run properly and causes the game to break in many ways. So this video is brought to you by me. If you want to go and watch me be terrible at games, I've got a gaming channel that is, I guess, my third channel. Yeah, my third channel now. That is Brody Robertson Plays. Right now, I'm doing solo streams where I'm playing through Hades and Bastion. And I have a mate of mine I'm playing with who right now we're playing Borderlands, the pre-sequel. But we might also go and play some Terraria as well. So feel free to go check that out. There'll be a link to it down below. Once again, that is Brody Robertson Plays until I decide to give it a better name. Because that name is way, way too long. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to... Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Monster, Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Pitchell, Peter the Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, there's some links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, uh, leave and pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.